here we have the 2022 Proton Iris and Persona facelift. Proton says both of these cars offer significant improvements over the older cars. And you should at least consider these two if you're looking for cars between the 40 to 60,000 ringgit mark. So there's a lot of questions to be answered here. Should you even consider the Iris over the MyV? And is the Persona a big enough upgrade over the Beza? That's a lot to cover, so let's get started. This review is brought to you by BH Petrol Infinity, the premium fuel that gives you more power and more mileage. Proton may call these two cars the MC2 versions, as in the second round of minor changes. But the changes here are much more significant compared to the previous round of facelift back in 2019. While that was more of a visual overhaul rather than anything else, here the changes go more than skin deep. We've got a new interior and a lot of changes under the skin as well. But that's about time because these two cars are no spring chicken. The Iris first came about in 2014, while the Persona is newer, but it's still from 2016. So we are looking at cars and platforms that are essentially around seven to eight years old. That's really old by car standards. The price range starts from 40,000 ringgit for the base models, going up to the range toppers we have over here at about 55,000 ringgit. Now, to be honest, that's quite expensive for what these two cars are. Both of these cars have had a few bumps in terms of specs and equipment, but in terms of the all important safety, it's still fairly below the standards set by the MyV. So that's a bit worrying to start with. But let's put that aside for a while and talk about the visual changes. First, starting with the iris. As you can see, this looks a whole lot different to what we've seen before. And especially in this active variant, it does look very cool. I think Proton has done a very good job in putting on the SUV or pseudo crossover look on this car without going overboard. The wheels look really good, but I do have issues with the way the body cladding stretched to the corners of the car, both front and back. Plus the small little sliver plastic across the rear doors, they don't look good to me. The Persona on the other hand gets a whole different treatment with a lot more chrome, a lot more classy look compared to the sportier looking Iris. Now overall I think this is a very successful facelift. Both of these cars have never looked better than they do now, today. Having said that, I am quite disappointed by Proton's decision to reserve the LED lights only on the top models on the Iris and Persona, whereas Perodua is pretty much fitting it across the board, even on the cheapest Beza and MyV. So now if you're buying the cheaper models, you may get the new look, but the older headlamp, which is not a good mix. Moving on to the back, the more fundamental design issues of the Persona is still in full display over here. There's not much Proton can do at this point other than scrapping the whole design and starting afresh. But that's not an option for a mere facelift. But even then, the changes are very, very minor. The tail lamps for the Persona are now given a smoked effect, while the ones on the Iris are exactly the same as they were back in 2014. The only saving grace is their rivals, the Produa, Beza and the Myvi are not exactly lookers from the back either. So it could have been worse. Before we head in, there's just a few things I want to highlight that I don't quite like. Number one, the button for the keyless entry system. Now this is only available on the driver's door and it's still using an old school button instead of an active sensor. But that is the same with the Produa Myvi as well, so I'll let that slide. My issue here is, is the use of a rubber button that's very hard to use. You gotta press it really deep in for it to activate. That's not a nice thing to do every single time you get up to the car. Number two is the rear doors of the Persona. Now, if you were to stand up close to the car and open, it's always going to hit you. So you have to actively remember to stand further back and then open it because this extended door is gonna hit you every time. That's just not a good look. Now onto the iris, the tail lamps are LEDs which is a step up compared to the Persona. But the third brake light over here is still using old school bulbs. What's up with that? Proton, I think it's time to go full on LEDs with these cars. The interior has gone through a much bigger change compared to the outside even. To the point where if you're not that familiar with the Iris and Persona cabin in the first place, you might think that this is an all new car instead of just a facelift. 
This entire top part over here is all new together with the aircon controls and this entire piece in the middle is brand new together with the center armrest that a lot of Malaysians have been asking for. I think given what they've had to work with, this has been a very successful interior makeover. Overall, it looks very fresh, very modern and not like a 7-8 year old design at all. But it's not all good. This center screen over here may look very good in photos, but in real life, there's just way too much reflection on the screen itself to the point where if you're driving, you can't really see what's on the screen. If you have a passenger, all you can see is uh, her chest area, which is can be a little bit distracting, I think. I'm just not quite sure how this went past Proton's QC. They did not see how bad the reflection is from the start. I just don't understand it. Another problem here is with the reverse camera. Here, the low brightness of the screen really becomes an issue. And specifically on the iris, the camera is just mounted way too low. It doesn't give you a good view of the parking lanes at all. The system itself though is pretty good. It's very unique looking, it's very easy to use. Just swipe left and right or top down as you do in a smartphone. And it's a very intuitive design as well. The only problem is it does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Instead, it's asking you to use its own map service instead of Waze or Google Maps, Jukes instead of Spotify. So yeah, I think as general Malaysians, we still prefer to use apps that we are used to. Here, we are not being able to. That's not a good start. But moving on, the icon vents are now placed in a much better location than before. Now, before this, the vents were on the side, so all it does is blow your left hands, freezing off your fingers. Now, it's much, much better. Down here, the icon controls somewhat mimic the ones on the X50, very easy to use, and the knobs feel a lot nicer than they did before as well. That is a huge plus. Moving further down is a small slot for your handphone. But I don't think they really thought this through. This here is a normal size phone, an iPhone 12 Pro. It slots in just fine, but if you have a much larger phone, it's just not going to fit. And if you were to put in a cable to charge as well, it's just not going to fit. Even Proton's official photos show it won't fit. But the biggest problem is the compartment itself is not lined in rubber or anything. So the phone is just being thrown about and when you drive, it rattles a lot. It's very annoying. And then you move down here, it does look very, very good until you move your knee against it and the whole thing moves. This does not inspire confidence at all. There are other issues elsewhere in the cabin as well. This LED light piece on top here does look very good. Looks a lot more modern than the old press buttons on the old car. But the light, as in the saga, goes directly into your eyes. So at night, it can be very, very annoying. This was taken directly off a Geely car from China, as you can see from the Chinese pattern on it. But it doesn't fit the full design of the Iris so much. Now, before you say I'm just nitpicking, that I'm just a Proton hater, I have to say that I really like the new cabin. The seats especially are so comfortable. They are much better than the ones on the Pro 2 MyV. The base of the seat is much bigger, much wider than the MyVs, much more comfortable over longer journeys. Even the backrest puts you, holds you in place, a lot more supportive than the more flat design of the MyV. And then there's a sitting position where it's almost perfect. Sitting behind the wheel, you just sets you in the mood to go for a drive. It's really good back here. One thing that is a bit more subjective is all the red bits that you see inside this Iris Active over here. I think it's a bit too much, even though I'm a big fan of red. But I do like the fact that this has bright red seat belts. Now, this makes you feel like you're driving an AMG and that is fantastic. The Persona interior has a much more classy looking colour combination. The seats are now covered in brown leather instead of black and all the red bits are now finished in a much classier looking silver highlights. Even the headlining is different here. You've got black ones on the Iris and fully tan ones on the Persona. Here it is very clear what Proton is doing. The Persona mirrors the colour combinations available on the X70, while the Iris mirrors the much more youthful X50, both outside and inside. 
One thing I really like is the full black dashboard on the Persona instead of the two-tone black and grey ones used before. This looks a lot more cohesive. One upgrade you can't really see is the inclusion of a small USB port behind the rear view mirror. This makes it easier to install dash cams without having to route the cable around the entire cabin. As for the rear seats, it's just about okay, decent, but strictly in terms of space, I think this feels tighter in the back here even compared to a Pro 2 Asia, let alone the bigger Beza in my view. Comparing between the Persona and the Iris, the sedan over here definitely feels a lot more spacious. Not exactly in terms of space, but just the visual feel of it. The brown seats, the light headlining, the bigger windows, it just feels a lot airier in the back here. If you're going to be using the rear seats a lot, I would recommend the Persona over the Iris. Even the seats themselves are more comfortable in the Persona because the backrest is angled better compared to the Iris which is a bit too upright. This definitely is more comfortable compared to the Beza and the Myvi. As for features back here, there's pretty much nothing to talk about. There are no rear aircon vents. That's the same story with the Myvi as well. So no biggie there. But you do get two powered USB ports down there to charge your phones or tablets. So that will keep your kids happy at least. As for utilities, there's nothing much more beyond this small little hook. It's not like the Myvi where there's plethora of small little hooks that you can hang your tapao food or whatever. Here is a lot less usable in that sense. Moving on to boot space, the Iris is just about possible with 215 litres of space. Now that may have been possible back in its day when it was first launched, bigger than the Myvi of its time at least, but now the Myvi has grown much bigger than this. If you're looking to carry a lot of luggage, the Persona makes a lot more sense with 510 litres of space. This is practically the same as the Beza, so it's more than enough for your weekend or even balik kampung journeys. Now onto the drive, starting with the numbers first. Both the Iris and Persona share the same 1.6 litre VVT 4-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. And that makes 107 horsepower and 150 newton meters of torque. Compared to the Myvi 1.5, that is 5 HP and 14 newton meters of torque more. The difference may be small in terms of numbers, but effectively, that is 5% more power and a full 10% more torque compared to the Proton. That is a significant advantage for the Proton. And even with the Protons being significantly heavier than the Produa as it normally is, the performance advantage is strongly in Proton side. You can really feel the extra power, especially when you press your foot down like this. The immediate acceleration is better on the Iris and Persona compared to the Produa Myvi. Now at no point are these cars actually fast, they are just, you know, slightly more powerful than what you would need for everyday driving. Proton also makes a 1.3 litre version of the Iris, but that is significantly less powerful than this one. Before this, that was only somewhat okay, somewhat possible with a manual transmission. But right now, there's no more manuals available because nobody bought them. So now it's only available with a CVT. The 1.3 Iris with a CVT combination, I don't think that's good enough. That's going to be too slow for normal driving. Now back to the Proton 1.6 VVT, it's a fine engine. It's not especially smooth, it's not especially quiet, but it's just okay. This is quite an old engine now, and Proton itself has admitted this is the end of the line for the engine. There's no more developments for this engine range. But having said that, this engine is not a bad one. It still pulls very strongly, there's no more torque dip like in the early Campro days and yeah it's a decent engine not great decent if anything I still think it's quieter than a Pro 1.3 1.5 litre four cylinder engines and definitely miles quieter than the three cylinder one litre in the Beza but of course we all know the sticking point with Protons is not the engine itself it's the transmission here Proton has somehow stuck to its grounds and still fitted a CVT to the Iris and Persona and this is a big change compared to the Saga where it has gone to a 4AT from Hyundai. 
talking to the engineers, I still get the impression that they still strongly believe CVT is the better option for the Persona and the Iris. Especially since pretty much the rest of the B segment range has gone the CVT route as well. Even the next Myvi facelift is going to get a CVT. So in that sense, they are saying they've been right all along. So with this, they've done a lot of improvements, a lot of changes to the CVT. Number one, SAT is now back. Remember SAT when it first launched with the Proton CVTs back in early 2010s? That used to be a separate button that you have to engage. Now, they found out that because it's a separate button, nobody actually used it. So now, it's automatically engaged as you go full throttle. So as you drive along normally, it reacts pretty much the same as before. It will stick to a certain RPM that the engine thinks is optimum for the amount of power it thinks you want. But if you press the throttle full, it goes to a SAT stepped automatic mode. Here the engine will rev up and down, up and down to give you a much more natural feeling like you're driving a normal manual or an automatic car. Now to me, this is not as successful as more modern CVTs, especially the one in the new Nissan Almera. That one, it reacts like a normal automatic. Doesn't matter where you're driving it, full throttle or part throttle, you will still have that smooth transition going up and down the rev range, so it feels a lot more natural, a lot more direct than before. With this, it only comes in at full throttle, which feels a little bit artificial. And even then, it doesn't feel as convincing as those in newer CVTs because it still feels very drony, very loud. Another issue people had with the CVTs have been the initial takeoff point with the older Proton CVTs. Now, I have to mention that Proton CVT is using a very old technology of CVTs. It's still using a clutch activated CVT instead of torque converters like in pretty much all newer, more modern CVTs nowadays. So you can imagine that as you move off from a standstill, there is somewhat like an automated clutch system that engages and disengages as you drive along. Now this can never be as smooth as a full torque converter system. But Proton has worked long and hard to improve this and I have to say it is much much better now than it was before. This has seen continuous improvement from 2014 to 2017 to 2019 and what it is now. Simply put, it has gone from being absolutely infuriating to somewhat tolerable to actually pretty good now. So those who are worried that Proton is sticking to the CVT with the Iris and Persona, they really shouldn't. Just go to the showroom, take it for a spin, and I think you will be convinced that it's not as bad as you may think. But having said that, it's still nowhere near as good as a proper modern CVT, which the new MyV will get. In terms of low speed driving feel, there is still that small little disconnect between your pedal inputs and the car's reaction and yeah, it doesn't feel as natural as you wish it could be. Whether or not this is going to be good enough for your regular use depends on your own personal preference. I think I can live with this but I would much prefer a better CVT or maybe even a 480. Now, one improvement that Proton has made for the CVT is something called neutral idle control. Now, it has found that most Malaysian drivers, when we are stuck in a traffic jam or a traffic light like this, we just leave it in drive instead of pushing it into neutral as technically you should be for a CVT. So what happens there in the old version is that the clutch is technically always trying to push the car forward but you're holding it with the brakes. So there's always going to be some sort of friction on the clutch plates trying to push you forward and that in the long run will wear out the clutch. Now with neutral idle control, the car will know that you're coming to a stop and you will stay there for a while and it will automatically engage neutral and not drive. This way, the engine will vibrate less, you'll feel more refined in the car and the clutch will last longer as well. That is a pretty good improvement. Now, one of the major drawbacks of this old school type of CVT is a rather narrow ratio range. So when you're going at slightly faster speeds, say 100 or 110, the engine is pulling relatively high revs. 110 is about 2,800 revs at this point, and going up to 120, you're almost pulling 3,000 RPM. So when you're cruising on the highway, it's almost feeling like the engine is being stressed 
like way more than it should be so in that sense it's not a relatively smooth cruiser you almost feel like the engine is always working way too hard like it's being pushed a lot more than it should be you can really feel this as you lift off the throttle at cruising speed say you're doing 110 you lift off the speed will immediately drop to 100 and then 90 and then to 80 at a pretty fast rate there you can feel that the engine is not comfortable pulling high revs as you drive along on the highways i think a pro Dua, my v or anything in the b segment and up feels a lot more comfortable cruising at 110 120 on the highways compared to this thankfully though in terms of fuel consumption the iris and the persona are pretty good through a mixture of roads through towns through traffic jams a bit of highway the iris i managed to get around 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers that's about 13 kilometers per liter not too bad for a car of its size while the persona i've gotten slightly better for some reason 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers that's about 15 kilometers per liter that's not bad for a car of this size of course that's not to the level of the myvi and the beza yet but for those thinking that protons are always fuel guzzlers that's not really true anymore the fuel economy tests were carried out with BH Petrol Infinity, the fully imported premium petrol with maximum German additives for peak performance to give you more power, more mileage and more savings. Now on to the fun bits, what has traditionally been Proton's core strengths is ride and handling. And here the Iris and Persona both absolutely shine. In terms of handling, it's miles ahead of the MyV. When it first came out, it was going against the second generation MyV and the difference was night and day. With the third generation MyV from 2017, the gap has closened up a little bit but the Proton is still far far ahead in my opinion. Everything from the steering wheel to the body control is in favour of the Proton. It's just a fantastic car to drive. When the Iris came about way back then, I likened the handling to the Ford Fiesta. It felt so light on its feet, the steering felt very positive, you can really feel the car dancing through the corners. And even now, even on the Persona with a much bigger body, you can still feel the same sensations. And with the Ford Fiesta no longer available in Malaysia, these are pretty much the two fun B-segment cars you can have on the road in Malaysia today. The thing is, that may not mean much to most Malaysian drivers because most Malaysian drivers they think that driving fun is driving fast in a straight line and there the Persona and Iris struggle a little bit. But to more traditional driving enthusiasts, the fun is in the bends and that's where the Iris and Persona shines. One thing I don't like about the driving dynamics of the Iris and Persona are the brakes. Proton brakes as usual feel very mushy especially when you first touch the pedal. There's almost a dead travel for the first one or two inches as you press the pedal and only after that does the car start braking. The first time I thought I had zero braking power at all, that was very alarming. But you do get used to it. It's only that if you're driving two different cars on and off, switching between the two can feel very very alarming for the first couple of meters. Proton has even said that this car has a shorter braking distance compared to the previous car. They've done small tweaks here and there, so the actual braking performance has been improved somewhat. I can't really feel it, but I kind of trust the numbers. Another dynamic aspect where this is miles better than the Proton MyV is in the way it rides. This has a much more sophisticated, much more comfortable ride compared to the MyV. It almost feels like you're comparing a continental car versus a Japanese car in terms of the way it soaks up bumps, handles large undulations. This feels much more planted, much more stable across the board. So overall, in terms of driving experience, I mean CVT aside, this is much, much better than the Pro Duas. Now on to refinement and Proton has claimed to have quite a fair few improvements over the outgoing cars. but. I somehow don't really feel it. They said there's a lot less vibration coming through the engine into the steering wheel, into the seat, into the pedals. The seat and pedal, yeah maybe, there's pretty much no vibrations left. But the steering wheel, there's a bit of a buzzing feel coming through the wheel. Especially when you're going on the highways over longer journeys, on doing 110, 120 maybe, that buzz you feel through the steering wheel can feel a little bit tiring after a long period of time. 
But having said that, the steering wheel is a lot more comfortable doing highway miles compared to a MyV because in a MyV the steering is always a little bit over assisted you are not feeling all that stable you're always having to correct do a minor corrections to stick in the middle of the lane this one feels a lot more confident i think through highway joints in other aspects of refinement this car is very respectable as well wind noise is quite muted unless you go beyond 110 120 even then it comes in quite gradually is not too big of an annoyance even let's say 130 140 Tire roar is a bit more of a problem, which is a bit of a surprise for me because for once, Proton has fitted very decent tires on these two cars. We now have Goodyear Assurance Triple Max 2 tires, which are decent tires, miles better than the ones we've had before. But the road noise coming in is still pretty significant. I thought that would have fixed it, but yeah, to no avail. But still, if I remember correctly, this is still better than the Prodoa Myvi. So all in all, in terms of refinement, there is still quite a big gap between the MyV and the Proton Iris and Persona in favour of the Proton, of course. One last thing, safety. The Iris was really a game changer when it first came out in 2014. It brought about electronic stability control and six airbag for the very first time in this price class. And that has forced Produa to really commit into improving safety as well. So overall, it has had a very, very good net effect onto the Malaysian car industry. Unfortunately, it may appear that Produa has benefited more from that even compared to Proton that actually started the revolution in the first place because now Produa is way ahead in terms of safety. It now has AEB in most of its MyV range, whereas the Iris and the Persona is still stuck in just six airbags, electronic stability control, and not much else in terms of active safety assists. Not having AEB in 2021, 2022 is a bit of a shame. But still, it's quite disappointing that Proton has fallen way behind Prodoa in terms of safety. This is an aspect where it has been very, very strong in the past years and now it's just lagging behind the competition. So yeah, definitely very disappointing in that sense. So that's our full review of the 2022 Proton Iris and Persona. As far as facelifts go, this is a very successful one. It looks better on the outside and on the inside. And beyond that, it also drives better as well. It's a lot more refined, has better fuel economy, and even the braking performance is better now. But as usual with Protons, you always end up thinking or rather wishing they had put in a bit more work to make things a lot better still. In this case, the centre screen, the reflections is definitely disappointing. So would I recommend these two cars over the Prodoa MyV and Beza? Simple enough. If you like how to drive, definitely go with these two cars. Its ride and handling is leagues beyond the Prodoa. And these cars' new features, new looks and a lot of other improvements make it a lot more accomplished than they were before. But all said and done, the CVT, despite all of its improvements, can still be a sticking point for a lot of people. For those who don't care how a car drives, they just want to get you from point A to point B, the Prodoas might fit you better. So what do you think of these two cars? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone. This review is brought to you by BH Petrol Infinity, the premium fuel that gives you more power and more mileage.